Hey class, so some of you have been asking me about this kind of weird qu question about these racetrack rocks in Death Valley. Um, I'll talk about it in more detail in class tomorrow, but I just want to make a quick video to get you guys going. So if you think about what we got going on here, we got these rocks and we're trying to see whether or not the drag force from wind could push them across the ground. So we're trying to see, okay, what kind of wind speeds would we need to push these things out? Would it be realistic or not? So drawing a free body diagram, we got the weight of the rock going down, the normal force from the ground that it's in contact with going up, and then we got, let's say the wind's blowing this way, so we'd have the drag force this direction, and opposing that would be the force of kinetic friction. And keep in mind that our drag force, our drag equation, tells us that drag is equal to one half the drag coefficient times the density of air times a, the cross-sectional area of the stones, and then V squared, the velocity of the object relative to the fluid that it's in. In that case, in this case, it'd be the wind speed. So, if we look at some of our forces, let's say some of the forces in the X direction, and we're told that we want to keep it moving, so basically we know that the sum of the forces in the X direction will be equal to zero. And so all we have is basically drag minus the force of kinetic friction will be equal to zero, or our drag force will be equal to our force of kinetic friction, which we know is mu k, which we're given, times the force normal. And the normal force from doing some of the forces in the y direction equal to zero, we can easily see that our normal force is just equal to the weight of the object. So what we find is that our drag force, which I'll write out our equation now, one half c rho a v squared is just going to be equal to mu times the normal, which is just mg. And so what you end up doing then is you have to solve this for v, right? So doing the algebra, you should be able to come up with an equation where you find that v is just going to be equal to the square root of 2 mu k mg divided by, dividing by everything that's left there, which is the drag coefficient c times the density rho multiplied by a. So if you plug in your values, you could get a wind speed, and that's the wind speed at the rock, which is what you're asked for in part a. So this would be your answer to part a whatever this comes out to be, boom, box worthy. The part B then really just says, okay, wind speeds are usually measured some distance off the ground. If that's the speed at the ground, the wind speed higher up would be actually 1.7 times that. So B is just asking you to take your answer from part A and multiply it by 1.7, and that's the measured wind speed. And then I want you to look at that and kind of conclude, do you think this is the actual explanation for what's moving it. Is that a realistic wind speed or not? If it's really high, then you know, yeah, it's not the right answer. And I'll actually explain what they believe is now the actual cause of this. So I guess I'm giving you a hint. It's not the wind. Anyway, all right, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.